Do you need a few quick ideas for your edits and motion graphics? Well, you've come to the right place because I have 10 motion graphic ideas that you can start using today to make you a rock star. This is what I spend my days doing now, coming up with 10 practical ideas. <laughs> All right, so for the first design, we're going to have textception, text within text. So feel free to type out a really large block of text or just ask our future overlords to type up something for you. Then type out a larger title or you can just say use a logo. Lastly, take your title block and set the track mat to that large title. And if you like, you can throw on the typewriter preset onto your title block and set it to randomize order. And now you have an easy way to stylize titles. A great design trick that you can quickly implement is a half screen blur. To do this, just create an adjustment layer and apply the fast box blur effect. Slightly adjust the blur radius and the iteration. Then you can keyframe the position of the adjustment layer to move from the outside of the composition to about the halfway point to create a professional half blur. Motion trails are a great way to give your animation some flavor and add a pop of color to your work. So here we have a white title with a black stroke that is animating you know, back and forth. Uh, what we can do is duplicate the layer and apply the echo effect from time. And quite easily you can adjust the echo time to dial in the distance. Also, we can change the color of the title. From here, duplicate the title again, change the number of echoes to two, and change the color. So every time you duplicate, just increase the echoes by one and change that delightful color. Now, if you like the idea of motion trails, well, here's another one. This is called a gradient morph trail and it's great for grabbing attention. So you can take a graphic that's already animated, duplicate it, and of course, apply that echo effect. Uh, this time around, increase the number of echoes to like 10 and then decrease the decay. Change the color like a boss and do another duplicate. Increase the decay and change the color again. And now you have a Morphe motion trail along with other made up words. Now, hopefully these shape animations may have caught your eye or I'm not doing my job correctly. If you want to easily give any basic shape a 3D style, well, take your original shape and duplicate it. Adjust the positioning so it's angled you know, like this, then apply the Venetian blinds effect and adjust the transition completion. And if needed, you can also apply the fill effect to change the color as well. And if your layer is animated, be sure to recenter the anchor points. But now you can add shapes that make your scene pop. On the topic of 3D, you may have noticed that TV shows sometimes have a logo graphic in the bottom third, which is called a bug. So here's how to make a 3D bug. Take your logo or a title and make it 3D. Be sure to set your 3D renderer to Cinema 4D. Then you can navigate to the extrusion depth and set it to 50 or so. Then just set the Z anchor point to half the value of the extrusion depth, which is 25 in my case. Animate the Y rotation from 0x to 1x and add an additional keyframe after 1x. And then you can alt click the stopwatch and add the loop out open close parenthesis expression to continue the animation forever. You can change the color of the side by going to animate side color and then change your color however you need. Now you can pre-compose your 3D graphic, right click on the layer, and add stroke from layer styles and then just change the color and now you have a professional 3D bug or just a rotating graphic. Pretty cool. Before we move on to our next technique, be sure to pick up our free motion duck templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. And if you find yourself needing to save precious time on all your projects, we have over 35,000 templates to help you produce amazing work with the link below. Fastest way to embrace the style of brutalism is by creating simple spherical grids. To make your work interesting, just create a solid layer that is 1000 by 1000, and of course, apply that grid effect. Feel free to change the color and adjust the corner control until you're cool with the amount of squares. Now, apply the CC sphere effect, and straight away, to remove unwanted lighting, set the ambient to 100 and the diffusion to zero. Then set the render to outside and alt click the stopwatch for rotation Y. Uh, and you can just add in the time asterisk 20 expression to make your grid sphere rotate. And lastly, create a stroke circle around the sides of your sphere. Oh, and I uh, missed those smiley face pancakes from IHOP. Diving further into spheres, you can use the sphere effect to create these really cool design elements. So for example, just create a composition that is 1080 by 1080. Uh, create a solid background of any color and select the shape tool of your choice and create a shape. Then add a repeater to the shape layer, increase the number of copies, and adjust the position repeater to lay out your duplicates. Then you can animate the offset to move your shapes. And when ready, recompose your work, 
and apply the CC Sphere effect again. You may adjust the light and the shading effects however you see fit, but now you have an animated design sphere to throw into your projects. The next trick is all about making your work seem extra, but it's a cool design concept if you need fast, detailed graphics. So feel free to create any small shape that you like uh, and then use repeaters to duplicate it like crazy. Then select the ellipse tool and click Tool Creates Mask. This will allow you to create a circular mask inside of your design. Now you can trim up the layer to just be a several frames long, duplicate it as many times as you like, move them randomly around your project and offset it in your timeline. All right, our last design is all about turning basic shapes into fully fledged volumetric light-esque scenes. So for example, you can create a simple white rectangle or any shape that you like, then apply the Gaussian blur effect, slightly increase it and turn off repeat edge pixels. Then follow up by adding the glow effect, just increase the glow radius to 100, then duplicate the effect and set the radius to 1000. Lastly, apply the CC spotlight effect to a white solid layer, set the height to zero, the intensity to 100, be sure to set the blend mode to screen and increase the edge softness. And lastly, use the anchor points to move the beam of lights. And finally, increase the cone angle. And if you like, you can create a mask to fade the spotlight effect into your dark scene. And for a final tip, you can add the wiggle expression to the glow radius to make your glow flicker. All right, those are 10 tips. Subscribe if you want to be the best and always be creating.